that is actually also something that's been talked about a lot in Denmark for the last five to eight years. And we actually have a word for it in Danish. I won't necessarily use it, but just to say that when I translate it into English, it goes on to happiness at work. And I think we all have a common understanding on, on, on what it is. But actually, it's also the only language in the world that we have a name for happiness at work. The first time I googled it and tried to Google translate it, when I did that into German, they suggested Arbeitsfrei. <laughs> so, <laughs> and Uwe, talk to Uwe right now. It, when, when I Google and translate it, it's Arbeitsfreude, and that makes sense. Yeah, but for the, the first time I did it five years ago, it was Arbeit, Arbeitsfrei. So, and there's nothing to do about that. So I'm looking forward to having the, the next 45 minutes together with you, hopefully to share, hopefully to inspire. As Javed told, I work with organizations, done tons of lectures on happiness at work. I'll try to uh, bring some of the best examples with me to share with you today. Yay. I'll cover what is happiness at work. That's the first thing, just to clarify what are we talking about. Next of that, it would be why. Why are we even talking about happiness at work? Shouldn't we just be working and go home and then be happy? And not least, but not the most important, how to do it. And there, it's also a little bit of work for you. Because in order to make a difference, you also have to do an action. So you will be working a little bit. What is happiness at work? Any suggestions? Glad and positive, yeah? yeah. Satisfaction. Satisfaction. Satisfaction? Satisfaction about about what you do. <coughs> yeah. Feeling excited about going to work in the morning. Feeling excited, yeah. How many of you are thinking, hey, tomorrow morning, yay, I'm going to work. <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's an, there is a high difference about, yeah, okay, I'm going to work, that's okay. And thinking, yeah, this is the best thing for me Monday morning. Uh, and Friday afternoon, oh, damn it, it's a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> is it possible? <laughs> Not exactly. And this is to, to, just to, to shut it out. And <laughs> but yeah, there's something to it that we actually really are excited about our work. And actually, not only about the work, but being at work. And the satisfaction, I'll get back to that, because that's a factor as well. Simple. To feel happy while working. And likely no matter what sector you're in, no matter what your job is, as long as you're happy while you're doing it. And I'll come back to how we can apply that even more. Because a lot of us is actually pretty satisfied about our work, but how to increase it. But before that, I'll try to call why. Because we need a motivation to work with this. Why? Well, for, for starters, research shows that companies with happy employees perform twice as, as good at the bottom line. So companies with happy employees earn more money. Why? Because when you're happy while you're working, you think more creative, you are more effective, you actually take better decisions. That's about the hormones, the oxytocin, the endorphins, the dopamine that we talked about yesterday and the day before. That had great impact on your ability to do a good job. And that's why if you're happy at your workplace, your company actually earns more money. So your managers must be interested in you being happy while you're working. Or if you're a manager, you will have interest in your employees will be happy. You will earn more money. Wait, happiness at work is one of the three most important things in order to be happy in life in general. We sleep eight hours, 
we work for eight hours, we have eight hours of free time. So eight hours a day is actually pretty much out of a day where we are awake, approximately 16 hours. It's half the day that we spend in our workplace. Might not make it the happiest times, or at least try to do it. Happiness at work is the best cure against stress. Stress doesn't necessarily come out of having too much to do at your job. Stress often comes out of your beliefs in order to not being able to do all your tasks. So what do I tell myself? As God said last, uh, yesterday, that the thought is coming the first. So when I'm behind with a lot of my tasks, what do I tell myself? How does that influence my feelings? How does that how does that influence my job and my way of co-working with my co-workers? Because that actually is very important as well. More happiness at work can reduce the number of days the employees are sick or how fast you have a staff turnover. So that's also back to the hormones. It's actually chemistry and physics that when you're happy, you're not ill that much. I know at least in Denmark, we have some sectors who have more sick days than others. Uh, and when we do the research, they are also the most <laughs> unhappy uh, employees at work. But when you're happy, you also tend to actually come to work. Not if you're really seriously sick, you stay home and stay in bed. And the happiest workplaces also have a politics that that's what you should do. Don't come to a workplace if you're half ill. Don't come if you, you, uh, your children are sick. Stay home, take care of them, come back when you're ready. When we have that environment at a workplace, it gives me also a little bit of secureness to actually perform when I'm there, but when I'm home, I have to take care of myself, I have to take care of my children in order to perform when I'm there. The, most, the three most important things missing when you have lack of happiness at work is either you're too busy. How many of you is really busy at work? <laughs> yeah? Back to the thinking about it. Because we can have a tons of work to do. And I know a lot of people who have a work, uh, work week at 60 hours. And they're pretty happy with their work and their work-life balance and everything else. But when I start thinking about, hey, I'm too busy, I cannot do my job, I can't do my tasks as good as I want to, then it influences our happiness at work. Then we are too busy. We can be busy and we can be too busy. That's a huge difference. Complaints. That we have colleagues. Oh, the other colleague is oh, so lame. Or now again, the assignment came in too late to me. Or you're too late at work or at our meeting, every time she's always the latest one. Or she's lazy, or we could never actually count on that when we have an assignment from ex-colleague, that is, it's never a proper job. That is really, really bad for the happiness at work when we start talking about each other like that. And lack of recognition. They'll clap on our shoulder. Hey, thank you very much for the help. Good job. That we actually remember that that becomes a culture. That we rec recognize each other. That we say, hey, it's a good job. And if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have gone so far. Or the job wouldn't have been good, that good. That is really also about the hormones. That if we recognize others, we have the oxytocin floating around, and it's, our brain is a little factory of hormones. And a lot of it, we actually de decide for ourselves what the factory has to produce. Do I have happy thoughts or negative thoughts? We have done a lot of different exercises. The good morning thing with Jaber uh, yesterday morning, saying, hey, good morning, you handsome bitch in there. Hey, have a good morning, or what, what he said. But the, the smiling, and as Philip said, when we are smiling, our brain doesn't know it's fake. No, 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 
it start producing all the hormones. And it's just great. And happiness just floats around. And when I'm happy, I can go around and, and poison all, all the others with happiness. And it's not like that I'm talking about happiness like fooling around. <laughs> I'm just so happy all the time. No, I'm not. <laughs> but when I'm stuck on the positive thinking, when I'm starting on smiling to myself or getting into the office saying good morning, there's a lot of different ways of saying good morning and that influence really, really much on the environment amongst your colleagues. And it's your responsibility. Come back to that. It comes there. Happiness at work is your responsibility. Not anyone else, yours. It's not the boss. Not the management, not the company, not the colleagues. It's your responsibility. No one else. Mainly because it starts with our thoughts. And as Gashi said last night, or yesterday, that being present, taking leadership, making your own decisions, how do I want to get in? So when I get into the office, I could get in and say, good morning, morning. Or actually, almost say nothing like this. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you have that in morning. But that's a huge, huge difference. And the good morning that you did with us this morning was just sometimes I do a good morning exercise. And it's not necessary because we did it. <laughs> but that was, on my level, a, a, a five good morning. And number five, we have number one. Uh. <laughs> that's <a> number one. <laughs> number two is like, morning. Number three, I actually look in the eyes and say, good morning. The second, the, the fourth one, good morning, good to see you. I actually have a little comp thing to it. And number five, don't go around the hard work and say, good morning, nice to see you. So we look in the eyes, I actually say, say something nice to my colleague, and I touch them. <laughs> Not that I want to. To all of you to, to go and uh, clap in, in the ass or something, <laughs> sexism, but again, back to the hormones. When we get a compliment and we actually have physical, that we touch each other, the hormones go. It felt good saying good morning this morning. And I know that we don't go around every morning hugging every colleague. At my workplace, it's when people come back from vacation. Hey, good to see you. And that's really nice that, hey, I've been gone for three weeks. And oh, yeah, that was a nice welcome back on work. Getting my coffee, saying hi to, to the colleagues, and just relaxing, sitting down. Now I'm ready to work. So think on, on what level you say good morning tomorrow when you enter your, your office or where you as opposed to work tomorrow. It has a big influence on the colleagues around you. And what you send out, come back. That's why it's your responsibility. The boss and the company has the, the responsibility to create a framework that enables um, employees to work. What do I mean by that? Any suggestions? Conditions, circumstances, tools. Yeah, what could, the, what, what could the circumstances be? Beer. Beer? Yeah. yeah. Happy hours. Happy hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sleeping bags. Sleeping bags. <laughs> yeah, but you're getting there, that we at least have some room for doing things a little bit different or doing things that is not necessarily only work. Or we have different uh, areas of meetings. Some meetings are around the classic table. Some meetings are uh, standing up at a bar desk. Some meeting is uh, walking around. Do a walk and talk. Get out, get a fresh air, actually, actually exercise while we're having a meeting. Hey, I would actually like you to, to comment on my ideas on the next project. Could you go for a walk with me? That, that we actually have the ability, and it's OK in the company to have a meeting like that. That could be an example that, that they create the environment it's for us to use it, to say, hey, now we go for a walk. We do a walk and talk. You give me some feedback on my, on my project or whatever. Isn't this the idea of team building, some team buildings at the end of the month? Or at the end of the month? Yeah, 
some companies have uh, every month in the end or in the beginning, it depends, some team buildings. They go, all of the uh, employees go somewhere yeah. to take down the stress and to to have some conversation with, which is not in business area. Mm. And the ideas come, yeah. actually. They do, yeah. And that's a good one. And, and keep that in mind because yeah, I'll, I'll come back to it. But yeah, that we actually do so stuff together, that we are social together, that we do something that's not just work related or I sit down by my computer at my office and that's it. That we actually do something together because when I know you and we have done some team building together, it's easier for me to say, hey, I actually, could you lend me a hand here? Or would you look, look at this prospect because I would like to have another couple of eyes on it. That's much easier when we've done team building. So yeah, that's, that's back to the, the framework that if the management puts it down to, that's something we do every month. At my workplace, every uh, Wednesday morning, we do sports together. I'm in a sports federation, so. But, but it's paid for when I do sports in that hour together with my colleagues and it takes turn who is uh, in charge of what we're doing. Yeah, so that's also an example of a framework that we do something together. Thank you. And happiness at work comes out of both the company politics, strategies, visions, culture, and out of what you and I do at the very moment we step into our workplace. <coughs> or the small actions throughout the day. It's a company that set the framework, but it's for us to fill it out and make the most of it. How many of you have uh, have cake weekly at, at work? Cake. cake. cake that's a that, that's a daily that, that's a Danish thing. Yeah. We also have this Danish word uh, hygge. It means uh, coziness, and we do that very very much. But in lots of workplaces in Denmark, uh, once a week uh, we sit down for a coffee and cake. Ten minutes together and just uh, yeah talking and and it takes turn of whose turn it is to to bring the cake. We do breakfast in Turkey, but it, it takes for like three hours, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know the Turkish food and eggs and everything and cheeses. So our boss is not happy about that. No, but yeah, that's a good example. And I believe that every culture has a different thing. Yeah. Thank you. In our company, best practices, every Monday we have a huge breakfast and we're sharing what, what happened in the weekend. Yeah. That's also a very good example of having a framework and actually have, and the action that you have to do is to participate. Yeah. When we actually have, have the framework and we have something going, then it's our responsibility to contri contribute and be there. Because otherwise it's, it's not fair for our colleagues. And maybe the management think in a half a year or a year that why bother, no one's coming. And then they will see the efficiency go down, the creativities. Yep. How? Well, it doesn't come by itself. That I can guarantee you. I've been working with a lot of companies, and it takes hard work. It's not done by a lecture in one hour by me. It needs action, and it needs constant focus. When I sum it up, I could talk for the uh, about the subject for days, but uh, when I sum it up and take, take some things out of it, it comes down to results and relations create your happiness. That means that we, we need both things. I cannot stand, if I say, say I have two legs, one is results, one is, one is relations. I cannot cope by standing only on one leg by the results. I do a very good job, I reach my goals, I earn a lot of money for the company, my customers are happy, everything is great. But if I don't have anyone to share it with, or actually interact with your cus customers, it's worth nothing. So I need the relations as well. I need to do team building, I need to, to collaborate with my colleagues. I need to have someone to share it with. I need to involve my customers or suppliers. Um, but I cannot do that alone. If I only stand on the relationship, 
like partying, having beer, having breakfast for three hours, having team buildings, uh, coffee, clapping on the shoulder, hey, you're the best colleague in the world, and we don't get any work done. We need the result as well. So we need to walk on both legs. We need both things. Make sense? Yes. Yeah? Please interrupt, uh, you know, when I am just start talking. <laughs> kind of goes. When we look at the results, be sure to set goals and milestones bef because then you don't know if you reach your goal or not. And make them visual. Have any example of uh, making your goals visual? Go um, what we do at the start of each year, we discuss about all the things that we have to do at that, at that year, the strategies and the vision of, of that year, and then we paint it on the wall. Yeah. And for the whole year, it stays there, and we are signing and putting some symbols and <coughs> making photos in front of it, and for the whole year, one wall, it's, it's a really big wall, is uh, covering all our uh, strategies and visions in the office. Yeah, and actions as well? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The things that we promised. Yeah, that you will work on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. More examples? Yeah. I can share once a month with all, with all the staff what it was accomplished throughout the month, tell them how close are we from, from the end of a specific task, and thank everybody for their cooperation and contribution. Yeah. Good one. So it's an email communication, but it really, you know, brings people closer, you know. It does. They, they, they really feel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a great way to, uh, to everybody feel into it in the project. But some people don't understand how important they are for the project. Yeah. Don't get it yeah. why. And you could actually give some special person's recognition in front of the others also. Yeah. I mean, regardless of, of their level in the, in the hierarchical structure of the company, I mean, at the end of the day, they all, you know, bring in, bring in something into the project. Yeah. It's happening. No matter how many stars we do have on the, <laughs> on the shoulder, everyone has an important role in the project. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I've been working with a company who is uh, who's very visual about uh, how many sales they have. So they have, uh, have balls they throw down in, uh, in a cylinder of glass. So every month, and, and when I had a sales, I put it down there. Boom, boom. So it grows, and it stands right when you get it into the office, and they can see every everyone can see it, and then then the empties throughout the months. One thing is to have them, but remember to celebrate them, both the small ones and the big ones. I work with a company that when they have sold for a million Danish crowns, um, then the CEO, there are two CEOs. And they are making a dish in Danish. It's called a million beef, and it's a stew. But they they stand out in the in the factory hall, and actually give lunch to all the employees. Other places they order a hot dog wagon to go there when they have a big order. Um, some have a bell they ring on every time there is a sale. But also the small things. In my company, we uh, we had a new. Um, computer system to register and everything and it doesn't make much sense for us <laughs> but it's, it's decided how to work with it and we find it really difficult but instead of always bragging about hey now I don't know this now the system cannot do that now I cannot find that file then we celebrate every time that we actually reach a new goal or hey I found out how to do that we have the Danish flag, and we'll just, hey, you have the flag today. <laughs> and sometimes the flag travels several times a day, but just to show that that's another, another way of turning the focus from negative and, and what the system doesn't can. It, it can do a lot of things. We just don't understand it. We just have to learn it. So by having the focus on what we actually succeed on, we have another environment. We have another way of thinking about it. And we are more happy, and we are more when we into the system. Like, 
yeah, well, if she can do it, I probably can as well, and maybe the flight comes to my task. <laughs> Come on, let's, let's work on this together. So both the small and the big victories and, and goal setting is very important for us. Again, the oxycetin, the dopamine, the endorphins, they are just happy to float around, but we need to get them started. This is one of the ways to start your hormones. And it also could be just, just a little cake or something like, hey, thank you very much for the help. Or, or for yourself, hey, today I had this list of tasks or this big project went out of the house or a milestone in the project. That means I can have a cappuccino for my coffee or I can have <laughs> a candy or a sweet. Just a little things to clap yourself on the shoulders. Again, hormones goes around. And the factory up here, the brain that produces all the hormones, it doesn't strike. And it's not ill. Yeah, sometimes it really, but, but hey, it just, it can go on and go on, go on, and go on. So hey, give it something to work with. Small recognition, yourself or do it to your colleagues. Because actually when we recognize a colleague and say, hey, what a good job, thank you very much for the help. Or actually just bring a coffee and say, hey, I just went for coffee and brought you one or took the, the printer paper from the printer with them. Small things like that, small kindnesses that is unexpected, is really accessitant. Both for me who's giving and the one receiving. So it's double up. Yeah. Then this one, I use it myself, that have the day of small successes. I can work on big projects, long development, uh, development strategies in a company or in a club. But sometimes I forget to clean out my mailbox, to call the dentist, to clean my desk, to call up and follow up on a client. So I have sometimes a day of small successes. I have all these small things and it feels really good to do like this 15 times a day. Ka -ching, ka -ching, ka -ching. <laughs> feels really good. And sometimes we have, have the big projects and, and it's just small milestones. It takes us two weeks to have a small milestone. So a day of small successes, I put them in regularly just to say ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Yeah. What do you think about the hour of small success? Because the day, or one day only for small successes, I'm not sure that it's a good idea. Because if, you, if you're doing a sales, if you follow up all the, the customers in one day, I know. Dep depends on what work you are in. Probably, and uh, in, in my field, uh, it's hour of small successes. It's an hour, yeah. yeah. And fit it into whatever fits you, because this is not a recipe that fits all. So we, if it's an hour, or it's a half day, or a day, but, but remember sometimes just to let yourself to say, ka -ching, ka -ching, ka -ching, ka -ching. That actually feels pretty nice. I and mean, it could be call the dentist and make an appointment, because I forget that. So, yeah. That was results. When we look at relations, <laughs> the other leg. Then Platon has once said, you learn more about another person through one hour of playing than through a whole year of conversation. That's why we do team building. That's why we do picnics. That's why we do all the other things. But playing is a lot of things. We could do team building once a month. Some do it once a year. Some do it every week. But also the little things of playing around. I have a, I have a JCI friend actually that owns a call, a call girl uh, firm. So, so they pick up the phone for the other companies. And they sit by the phone, phone every day and they really know the importance of the smiling in the telephone. But when you sit in the office, there's 20, 30 girls sitting, picking up for different companies. Sometimes it feels hard to keep smiling. Hello, good day. So, so they joke around, they play around a lot at that company. So, uh, so once a month or whenever they feel like it, it's like, well, uh, could we tomorrow have a silly hat day? 
it doesn't matter because the clients can't see them, but in the office they are out smiling. They say, nice hat there, <laughs> yeah. Or uh, silly noses, silly glasses, or uh, dress up days. Dress up like your favorite cartoon. And then they post it on Facebook. And the clients really like it, and they are hilarious about it. And when they, every second month they invite all their clients to the office to a Friday beer or something. And, and they have something to conversate about. They are building relations. They are playing in the office to be happy, to smile on the phone, but also the clients have something to talk with them about. And twice a year they have this uh, cake, cake bake competition where all the girls compete, compete about having the best cake and they of course invite the clients in the end of the workday to come join them. And then post it on Facebook and you could go in, you could like, the cakes, even though they are, you're not there, I could sit in the other part of the country saying, hey, that one looked nice. I like that one. So, so they interact and they play, they fool around. Now another company where the receptionist uh, sometimes put on a red clown nose. And everyone smiles. And hey, it doesn't take anyone anything else than a great deal of courage, actually. Just to play around, just to be there. Sometimes just look at our kids, and that helps me sometimes. And I say, okay, well, it's not that silly. We, we have a laugh, and we have it for a good course, because on the bottom line, we earn more money. So don't be afraid, or have dance zones. I had my daughter with me on, uh, on the in the office this summer. We didn't have much to do, so I thought, well, that could be okay. And she had, all of a sudden, all the gymnastics uh, tools out in the whole, whole of the office and, <laughs> and the kitchen area. But that meant that my colleagues, when they came, they just jumped around from one thing to the other. Or she said, hey, could you do a, uh, wh what is it called? Rollover. Yeah, a rollover. Oh, yeah, of course I can. And yeah, we didn't have that much to do at the office. The office was open. We had work to do. But it was a nice day of working, and sometimes we should invite our children to the work to, to inspire us. So, yeah, have small mattresses or something that say, hey, here you jump, or jump over this. Doesn't take much. But again, the hormones get going. Just get coffee, walk backwards, or spin around. Small things, but it works, if you dare to do it. Help a colleague. That's also, yeah. Should we go for a walk, take this, or come with a coffee, say, hey, I have a spare hour. Does anyone need my help? I know some of the teams at my work, they, they meet daily at the, after lunch and say, well, my day is, am I yellow, green, or red? Or green, yellow, red, like the traffic light. And if I'm red, maybe I have a colleague who's green who says, yeah, well, uh, I'm finishing up my daily task in half an hour. I can lend you a hand with something. Could be a, a way of it. And then again, the unexpected helpness or kindness really gets the accident going. <coughs> Social activities like team building, like we talked about, playing around, going for a run. Uh, it could also be after work, go to a wine taste, have family picnics, all kind of stuff. What do you do at your workplaces of social activities? Video games, yeah. So you meet up after work and do video games. Yeah, or during work. Or doing work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If that's okay with management, that's fine. Yeah. We do karaoke singing. A what? Karaoke singing. Oh, karaoke game. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure you are all laughing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Again, the fake, the fake or the real smile doesn't matter. Yes. Cool. Please share, because in a moment you will be working. Okay. The how. Covered some of it. Yeah. Because now it's your turn. I would like for you to sit in groups of three to say, hey, what can I do at my workplace? And hey, this goes for the JCI chapter as well. I've actually done this in a lot of JCI chapters as well saying, hey, how do we create more happiness in our chapter, more energy, more passion, so that we actually go through with our projects? 
And I know that some chapters, some organizations just go over there full of energy. I've experienced it here the whole weekend and it gives me a lot of pleasure and a lot of joy. But I also come to chapters that are 50 years old and they are kind of a little bit tired and they actually do have some of the members that's been there for 50 years. Even though they're seniors now, they still join the chapter meetings and say, well, we've done that, tried that. No, 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 new idea. And hey, come on, do something. And they only meet up for the chapter meetings. They don't, they're not social, they're not on the convention, blah, 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 blah. So it also goes for your JCI chapter. So groups of three. Groups of three, the question is, what could you apply to your workplace, small or big, to create more happiness? Hey, look what I borrowed. <laughs> Philippe was so kind to, uh, to lend, the, lend me his cock. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Carrera. <laughs> okay. It's really nice to, uh, to have you talking, but I also know that we have a program. Yeah. So, just like Friday, whoever gets the cock gets to share an idea that you could implement at your workplace. So, eyes on the cock. Oh. Woo! <laughs> so, one idea you talked about. <laughs> <laughs> Please share. Yeah. She's embarrassed to speak in English okay. in front of so many people. That's okay. <laughs> uh, some of the ideas is just uh, go on margarita party or uh, just uh, be nice at work. And how do you? How are you nice? Uh, just say uh, hi. I like your dress. You have a beautiful smile, or uh, you're really nice person or just small things but when you say something good to somebody and yes yes thank you very much yeah eyes on the cock <laughs> don't run from the cock yeah and playing together video games what games? Video games. Video games. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. They're programmers. Yeah, we actually grabbed some of your ideas to give some small presents to the employees if they have done some, something successful. Uh, and this should be done much more often than we do it right now in my company. Small things daily. A biscuit, for example, or something. So, so small things of recognition. Yes, exactly. So the small things make it, I think. Yeah. And that's what I want to introduce in my company soon, I think. Yeah. And we should discuss more. Right now it may happen that all of the programmers are busy with the project and they are doing their job the whole day without any interaction or discussion with each other if they are really busy with the job. But even in such a situation, we should discuss more and ask them, how is the progress? Do you run into any problems? Can I help you? We do this, but we do not do it often enough. So work more on the relations in order to actually create better results. Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Go in. Yeah? So what are you talking about? The ideas that we generate, and first of all, the table clothes, like to decorate the place with interesting. So create your own table in different ways. Yeah? Cool. Flowers. <laughs> flowers? Yeah. To decorate the walls with collages and green some pictures. Pictures, and, yeah. Presentation with which motivator. Cool. Thank you. Last one. The roller cup. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe another thing is to always be appreciative. So when somebody does something, you should always say, I loved your presentation so much. You were so good at that. Or uh, you just let this meeting like no other. You were the best. Yeah. So people just feel happy when they feel that. So giving positive feedback. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for sharing and sharing around. The last task is now, what will you do at your workplace? One thing that you will do tomorrow or during the next week, or at least 
put into action? What is the one thing that you will do to create more happiness at your workplace? Could be your good morning, could be positive feedback, could be small presents, it could be I want to arrange the social activity, it could be anything. But the one thing that you will do, if not Monday, then at least start it from next week. Yeah? I'll give you one minute to write it down, because when you write it down, there's a bigger chance that you actually will do some action on it. We saw that yesterday. Okay. One of the last things I, I wrap up with, it's nice to have you talking, and I'm sure that we are having lunch. But I wish you a very great day at work tomorrow. At lunch, I would um, recommend that you share your ideas. I don't think that you need a topic of talking about, and we, we don't know how to talk over lunch after these fantastic days. But you could ask, hey, what are you going to do tomorrow at your workplace? Because when we also talk it out loud, as Simon said, it's an even bigger chance that we actually do an action. One last thing I will share with you is that I actually also have companies that don't have a cock as a meeting leader, but then they have a talking ball or a talking fish or some, some kind of thing that actually goes around in the meeting that if you want to talk, you only talk when you have this one. That's a kind of fun way to, to steer the order of the talking and it's much easier for the, for the chairman of the meeting to say, hey, you don't have a cock. Wait your turn. It becomes very, very visual. And we can smile and smile. Ka -ching, ka -ching, ka -ching, ka -ching. Hormones makes you happy. Yes. Thank you very much for participating. Please keep in touch. Thank you for having me here.